Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you are new to this channel, just click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll get notified on our future videos just like this one. In this video guys, we are going to discuss about dynamics of rigid body. So this is the first video that I did for this subject. Okay guys, so when you say dynamics, this is actually a continuation of our engineering mechanics, statics. Statics yung nauna. Then we have our prerequisite yung statics for dynamics. And when you say dynamics guys, we are dealing with the bodies in motion. So this is the part of mechanics that deals with the analysis of bodies in motion. So dynamics have two parts. Meron tayong tinatawag guys na kinematics. Ito yung geometry of the motion. Ibig sabihin nito guys, dito pinag-aaralan lang natin or we will study here the relationship between displacement velocity, acceleration, and time without the reference that causes the motion. In other words, we are not going to deal with the forces that causes the motion. That is a part of the second branch of dynamics, which is kinetics. So when we say kinetics, it is actually the relationship between those uh, parameters, displacement, velocity, acceleration, and time, as well as as the forces that causes the motion but here in this video guys we are just going to discuss first about kinematics so in dynamics of rigid bodies we are going to deal with this uh, parameters we have displacement velocity acceleration and time so when you say displacement guys this is actually the change of distance so you just subtract the final position to the initial position so this is different from distance only so let's say a uh, body is moving from, okay, let's say it, it moves from this positive x direction. So let's say it moves here, uh, 2 meters. Say uh, this is 0, initial, that is origin. And this is uh, 2 meters. Then uh, the body moves 2 meters to the positive x axis. Then it moves to the left at a distance of, let's say, 1 meter. So the displacement say x change of x is the displacement it is actually the difference between your final position minus initial position so displacement is your final position that is in this example it moves two meters to the positive x-axis then it moved one meter to the left which is the negative x-axis it goes so it is two meters minus one meter that is one meter so the displacement of this object from this initial position okay to this final position here is actually the displacement so it moves two meters positive x-axis then it moves one meter to the left or to the negative x-axis so that is displacement now distance is different because the distance is actually the total length that is traveled by that object so in this case yung ating distance Distance is actually equal to 2 meters plus 1 meter, that is 3 meters. So that's the difference between uh, distance and this displacement. So that's the difference between the two. Now when you say velocity, velocity tells how fast a body is moving. Okay, so yung unit ng velocity guys is in terms of distance per time. Okay, so velocity is a vector quantity. It means that it has direction, it can be positive it can be negative okay so let's say we have a car here so in terms of velocity guys it tells how fast the body is moving so yung dalawang involved na parameter here is your distance is the displacement okay so this displacement and time okay so these are the two parameters that are involved when we are talking about velocity Okay, now velocity, velocity has, so meron siyang dalawang type. Okay, so yung tinatawag natin guys na average velocity. So pardon my handwriting guys, I'm not that good really in writing. So this is what you call the average velocity. And we have what we call the instantaneous. Okay, so instant. velocity 
So, these two type of velocity are different from each other. Okay, so let me explain the difference between the two. Okay, so explain natin guys in the simplest way possible. Okay, so when we are dealing with average velocity, so ito guys, graphical representation, let's say a car. See, we have this car here at initial position. So, at any given point, that's what you call the position of the object. Take note of that term, position. So, we have this. Let's say at this point, ang velocity ng car is, let's say, 5 meters per second. Then, uh, let's say, this point here, say it moved faster at a rate of, let's say, 6 meters per second. Then, let's say, at this final position, say the car moved for say position 1 and position 2 let's say at this final position it it moves at a velocity of 10 meters per second okay so the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity is based on its term okay so when you say instantaneous velocity it is actually the velocity of the object at that certain point or position at that certain time it you saying guys so at position 1, the instantaneous velocity of this car is 5 meters per second. Say so it's changing, right? So at this position here, it is 6 meters per second. Let's say at, pos at this position, final position, that is 10 meters per second. Okay, it depends on the movement of the object. So instantaneous velocity is the velocity of the object at that certain position, at that certain instant of time. So, when you say average velocity, guys, it actually depends on the time interval. Okay, so meron tayong time interval when we are dealing with average velocity. So, that's the difference between the two. Average velocity, we are dealing with the interval of time. While instantaneous velocity is the velocity at that point, at that instant of time. Okay, so let's say, let's say this... Let's say that this distance here, let's say change of x. Okay, so let's say that this distance, ang analysis natin nag-start dito, let's say at point 0. Okay, so this is at origin. And let's say that this point here, say 300 meters. And this change of x is of course, change of x is just equal to 300 meters minus initial position that is 0. So change of x is 300 meters let's say that it took 65 seconds for this car to travel a displacement of 300 meters now based on these parameters we can compute for the average velocity so the average velocity of the car is your change of distance this is displacement per unit of time so this is just equal to 300 meters divided by 65 seconds so the average velocity of the car is just equal to we have here 4.6 okay 4.6 meters per second so that is the difference between the average velocity okay that is the difference guys between the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity of an object okay so instantaneous ibig sabihin that is the velocity at a certain position at a certain specific instant of time so at this point initial position 5 meter per second yung instantaneous velocity nya and at this point here at the middle 6 meters per second at the final position instantaneous velocity is 10 meters per second it's different from average velocity because the average velocity depends on the time interval okay so the average velocity is computed using this concept it is the displacement per unit of time now how can we compute for the instantaneous velocity so let's just make that car a certain particle okay so this is say point one position two okay position one and position two now since instantaneous velocity is the velocity at that instant okay if only we could shrink okay if only we could shrink that average velocity at a single point 
such that the instantaneous velocity is that is smaller and smaller change of x to smaller and smaller change of time so we just shrink that so that shrinking to a single point requires the use of calculus yes guys you heard it right but don't worry okay mag worry because it's really uh madali na lang siya as long as naiintindihan natin yung concept so i will explain it to you here step by step so don't worry because calculus is really involved in the study of mechanics so that is one of the most important application of differential and integral calculus here in dynamics and in other subjects so how can we possibly shrink in infinitely small a uh, point okay so that is instantaneous velocity is just the limit okay it's the limit so let's, let's say this is x then it change from this position x it change at a distance change of x therefore this final position here is x plus change of x the difference between this final and initial position is x plus change of x minus initial position that is x per unit of time so as time approaches into a smaller and smaller value as it approaches to zero so that's the possible way in order to calculate the instantaneous velocity now if we recall calculus instantaneous velocity will just be simplified as the differential of x with respect to time okay so this is the instantaneous velocity of a certain object so that is dx over dt where in x is the displacement and t is the time let's say for example the movement of a body let's say the movement of a body is given by this equation let's say x is equal to t squared okay so this is the relationship between the distance and the time of an object now i-graph natin siya guys so this is a parabola okay so i-graph natin siya so the graph of this curve is like this okay so parabola siya so this is time here so this is time and distance plane so tx let's say at time one second what is distance x okay so x at one second so that is one squared so x is one okay so one yung x pa rin natin so one din yung x natin at time one okay so that is now let's say at time two seconds what is the distance traveled by the object x so substitute natin at t is equal to 2 seconds so that is x equals so 2 squared so x equals 4 okay so this displacement here is 4 and this is at time 2 seconds now how can we compute the instantaneous velocity of this object at a certain point okay so we can calculate the instantaneous velocity equation by differentiating this equation with respect to time so x equals so t squared using power formula we have here dx equals 2t derivative of t then we have dx over dt as 2t okay so this is the equation for the instantaneous velocity so what is the instantaneous velocity let's say at time one okay so at time one second what is the instantaneous velocity so dx over dt just substitute one to time so two times one so that is two let's say lagi natin ng unit let's say this is in meter so x is in meter so this value here so t is in seconds let's say t is in seconds so this value here is two meters per second therefore at time one second the instantaneous velocity of this object is two meters per second okay what about at time two seconds so just substitute it here okay so dx since dx over dt okay dx over dt is equal to 2t we have here two times at two seconds that is actually 
for meters per second. So this is the instantaneous velocity of this object at time 2 seconds. That is 4 meters per second. So the slope of this curve is actually the derivative. Okay, so i-recall natin yung differential calculus. The differential is just a uh, slope. Okay, so you can see here the slope, the tangent. Okay, the tangent line. Okay, yung tangent dito. Okay, is actually dx over dt. Okay, so that is 2t. The tangent here. Okay, so what is the slope there? Okay, so steeper yung slope dito sa time 2 seconds because dx over dt there is higher. So that is 4 meters per second. So that is the slope. So less steep yung tangent line dito sa at time 1 second because the slope of the tangent line there, which is the derivative, is just 2 meter per second. So therefore, if you are going to find the instantaneous velocity of a certain object given tayo ng equation of the movement of the curve you just get the first derivative dx over dt and you will get the instantaneous velocity equation and you just substitute for a specific value of time there you can find the instantaneous velocity at that instant at that specific time now, how can we compute the average velocity? Let's say, what is the average velocity from time equals 1 second to time equal 2 seconds? So, the slope of this line connecting those two points from 1 second to 2 second is actually your average velocity. So, recalling the average velocity, average velocity is just equal so the average velocity is just equal to change of x which is the displacement per unit of time. So we can compute that. Okay, from 1 second, that is at position 1. So that is initial. Then yung final position niya is 4. Okay, so this is 4 minus 1. Then yung change of time natin is from 1 second to 2 seconds. So that is 2 minus 1. So, this is just equal to, you have here 3 meters per second. So, this is in meters. This is in seconds. So, this is the average velocity from time 1 to time 2. So, V sub 2 plus V sub 1. So, divided by 2. So, V sub 2 at this position. So, there is also another way to compute your average velocity using your instantaneous velocity. Okay, so yung average velocity can also be computed using, i-average lang natin guys, that is at 2 seconds, yung ating instantaneous velocity is 4 meters per second, while here, while here at 1 second, that is 2 meters per second. Okay, so this is 2 meters per second so v sub 1 so v sub 2 4 and v sub 1 is 2 so we have here 4 meters per second plus 2 meters per second divided by 2 so that gives us an equal value which is 3 meters per second so that's how you compute average velocity and this is how you compute for your instantaneous velocity okay let's go to the concept of acceleration okay so if distance okay so if distance is actually changing with respect to time velocity is also changing with respect to time so so from the previous example yung car so let's say uh, five meters per second here so we have here the three positions of the car wherein nagbabago guys yung velocity niya if the velocity is changing with respect to time meron tayong tinatawag guys na acceleration it tells us how fast the velocity is changing okay with respect to time there are also two types of acceleration namely we have average acceleration and we have the instantaneous instantaneous acceleration when you say instantaneous acceleration we only get the acceleration at that certain position let's say this is a time say at time say one second this is a time 
uh, 4 seconds, you have here time, say 5 seconds. Okay, so this car here has an acceleration because its instantaneous velocity is constantly changing. So it's changing, therefore we have acceleration. Now to compute your average acceleration, almost the same so almost this so the same concept that the average acceleration is the change of velocity all over change of time okay so yung change of velocity natin that is v sub 2 minus v sub 1 so divided by the change of time okay so what is the average velocity from time 1 second to time 4 seconds you just subtract the initial to the final velocity so that is 6 meters per second minus that is 5 meters per second divided by the change of time which is 4 minus 1 so 4 seconds minus 1 second okay so the average acceleration is just equal to 6 minus 5 so that is 1 divided by 3 okay 1 meter per second divided by 3 seconds so that is 0 0.33 so 0 0.33 that is meter per second per second or 0 0.33 meters per second squared now if you want to compute the instantaneous acceleration we need to shrink okay this velocity okay smaller and smaller velocity with respect to smaller and smaller of time that can be possibly done using calculus so the instantaneous acceleration a is just the derivative of velocity with respect to time now this is the concept of instantaneous acceleration now since v is equal to dx over dt we can just substitute that here so differential of dt that is times v which is dx over dt so that gives us guys d squared x over dt squared so therefore if you want to get the acceleration you just get the second derivative so let's go back to our first example eto guys so in order for us to get the acceleration so this is velocity so this instantaneous velocity is equal to 2t then if we get the second derivative of this so d squared x over dt squared that is just equal to 2 so therefore the acceleration of this body is 2 meters per second squared so if we can see here so kung makikita natin dito guys nagbabago yung ating velocity at 2 meters per second per second so kitang kita naman siya guys dito sa figure natin that at time 1 second 2 meter per second at time 2 seconds nagdagdag siya guys ng 2 meter per second that's why it became 4 meter per second and so on so at time 3 seconds so at time 3 seconds dagdag ulit siya guys ng 2 meter per second per second so 4 meter per second plus 2 meter per second that is 6 meters per second that's how you get the instantaneous acceleration so this body guys it is only moving so it's it's only moving in a straight line this is what you call rectilinear motion okay so yung curvilinear motion are going to be discussed in my next uh, videos guys so in this video straight line lang tayo rectilinear motion so in order to derive all the formulas in rectilinear motion compare using equations the displacement velocity time and acceleration we need calculus of course so we need to derive those formulas we just need to understand these two concepts that the instantaneous velocity is dx over dt derivative of distance with respect to time then we have the instantaneous acceleration as derivative of velocity with respect to time okay so that's the two formulas we need in order to derive all those formulas Okay, so using this formula here, we have here from the first equation, we have v dt is equal to dx. Then we can say that dt is equal to dx over v. Then we can substitute that here sa ating second equation. So acceleration is equal to dv. So ang dt natin guys is dx over v. This can be simplified as v dv over 
dx. Multiply tayo ng dx to both sides, this becomes a dx equals v, derivative of v. Now, if a is a function of x, ibig sabihin, in-express siya guys in terms of x. Kung kanina guys, mapapansin nyo that x is equal to t squared, yung distance natin is in-express siya in terms of time, function of time yung x natin. Now, we just integrate this guys, both sides. So, this is from initial position x1 limit natin to x2 and this is from initial velocity v1 to final velocity v2 formula. So, a can be a function of x so integral of, we have here x1 to x2. So, this is a dx so, we have here equal. So, ito guys, power formula. So, from the power formula, so this becomes v squared over 2. Okay, so this is from v1 to v2. So, wag na natin lagyan guys ng constant of integration because this is a, a definite integral. So, this becomes, substitute lang natin, upper minus lower limit. So, we have here v2 squared minus v1 squared all over 2. Okay, so we have here integral of, we have here a dx. If a is constant, so if a is constant, magiging simplified guys yung ating mga formula. Okay, so if a is constant, pwede natin ilabas yung acceleration here. But basically, this is the general formula. Okay? So pwede natin ilabas yung acceleration if a is constant. So if a is constant, acceleration is constant, this becomes a integral of, you have here dx. And you have your x1 to x2. You have your v sub 2 squared minus v sub 1 squared all over 2. So that is upper limit minus lower limit. Sinabjut lang natin. And this becomes a x. And we have here integral ng dx is x. From you have your x1 to x2. Then this is just v2 squared minus v1 squared all over 2. Then this is a times, substitute natin, upper limit minus lower limit, so this is x sub 2, substitute lang natin, minus x sub 1, okay, so we have here, v sub 2 squared minus v sub 1 squared all over 2, so ito guys, kung makikita nyo dito, this is actually a familiar, this is a familiar formula in dynamics or in physics, if you have gone through uh, dynamics in physics, so we have the formula, final velocity squared minus Initial velocity squared is equal to, multiply natin to both sides, so this becomes 2a acceleration times x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So if x sub 2 minus x sub 1 is the displacement, change of x, just change that to change of x. So v sub 2 squared minus v sub 1 squared is equal to 2a change of x. So this is the formula relating velocity, acceleration, and displacement if acceleration is constant. Okay, so this only works if the acceleration is constant. So, this is the formula. Now, in other books, change of x, ang ginagamit na variable sa kanya is s to simplify. You can just change that to s. Okay, so that is a displacement. So, v sub 2 squared minus v sub 1 squared is equal to 2a s. So, that is a formula in relating velocity, acceleration, and displacement. If A is constant. If A is not constant, kung given siya guys in terms of kung given siya guys in terms of equation, just plug it here. I-plug in lang natin siya dito sa formula. Yan. So using this concept of acceleration, we have here A dt. Multiply dt both sides. So A dt equals derivative of V. So integrate natin siya guys both sides. So this is from time 1. So, usually, ang time natin, time 1 is 0. So, let's just put here, initial time natin is 0. And the final time is t. Then, we have here, initial velocity v1 and final velocity v2. But in other books, guys, yung initial velocity nila is v sub o. So, here, guys, I will just use 1 and 2 for simplicity. So, this is the general formula in relating acceleration, time, and velocity. So, acceleration, dt, we have here, 0 to time, t. And we have here, this is v sub 2 minus v sub 1. Okay, so if in-integrate natin yan. So this is the general formula relating acceleration, time, and velocity. So dito guys, walang distance na 
uh, given. If distance is not given, you can actually use this formula. If acceleration is constant, pwede natin siyang ilabas guys sa integral sign. So, a dt, so you have here 0 to t. If a is constant, then we have here equals v sub 2 minus v sub 1. Then, acceleration is t minus 0. So, substitute lang natin yung upper minus lower limit. So, this becomes v sub 2 minus v sub 1. So, this gives us a t equals v sub 2 minus v sub 1. Then, v sub 2 is equal to v sub 1, transpose natin, plus a t. So, this is the formula. This is the formula if you want to relate velocities, acceleration, and time. So, this is another formula. So, this is the second formula na na-derive natin. So, let's just substitute this v sub 2 here to equation 1. Okay, so this becomes v sub 1 plus a t. That is e squared minus v sub 1 squared is equal to 2 a s. Okay, so this becomes, so expand lang natin guys. So this becomes v sub 1 plus a t quantity times v sub 1 plus a t. So this is minus v sub 1 squared is equal to 2 a s. Then we just, just uh, do the FOIL method here. Distribute lang natin. So v sub 1 squared. So, plus V sub 1, 80, plus V sub 1, 80, we have here plus A squared, T squared. So, minus V sub 1 squared is equal to 2 AS. Okay, so we have here, ito guys, mag-cancel na siya, V sub 1 squared, cancel here. Then, then we just... We just combine these two, so this becomes 2 V sub 1 A T. Okay, so plus A squared T squared is equal to, we have here 2 A S. Okay, so we have here 2 V sub 1 A T plus A squared T squared is equal to 2 A S. So divide natin guys both sides by 2 A. Okay, so this becomes V sub 1 t plus so this one here becomes a t squared over 2 then we have here s so s guys so s is just your displacement x sub 2 minus x sub 1 so let's just change that so you have here x sub 2 minus x sub 1 is just equal to v1 that's initial velocity times time plus 1 half a 1 half a t squared or transpose natin guys yung x sub 1 so the final position is just equal to x sub 1 plus v sub 1 times time plus 1 half a t squared so we have derived this other formula okay so this is how you derive formulas in dynamics guys so in my next video guys i will be teaching you on how to solve problems involving dynamics of rigid body so in this first video this is an introduction to dynamics I'll explain to you the concepts of displacement velocity acceleration and the two types we have the instantaneous and the average so that's it for today's video guys i hope that you have learned from this tutorial so as always guys if you are new to this channel just click the subscribe button and your notification bell natin guys so that you'll get notified sa mga future uploads ko and of course, you can also follow me guys on Facebook. That is facebook.com slash engineerprofph. See you guys on my next video. Stay safe and God bless you all.